All right, you guys. It's water change time. Let's get to it. And you gotta have your cup and coffee while you're doing your water changes. Alright you guys, there's the python way. And now let me show you even a little better way to get water out of that tank. Quickly. Whoa. Get yourself a power head and an old garden hose. Drop that bad boy right in there. Be careful you don't suck up anything. You can do a simple DIY inlet on that right there. So, you can see where I'm pointing, but I'm going to keep a good eye on it so I'm not worried about it, but if you have a small fry or something like that, make yourself a DIY inlet so you don't uh, suck up anything. See, you cut that time in half. Move on to the next one. Move that a little bit closer to the substrate, and then I can pick up all that gunk. Just be careful you don't put it too close to the substrate. So you'll suck up a bunch of gravel. Which is exactly what I just did, so I'm gonna unplug that. Unplug it. Dump it out. Plug it back in. We're back in business. All right, let's move on to the next one.
see I got a bunch of the tritus and so forth down over here so I'm gonna kind of angle this bad boy so I can pick up that I got some some leftover food some green beans I don't want in there anymore Stay tuned, I'll be back. All right, you guys, film back up the tanks. Already put my dechlorinator in this one. the chlorinator in there. All I like to do is keep my hand over the end of the hose. I do crimp the hose so I can control the overall output of the water flow. And I can maintain consistency with the temperature, provide some uh, diffuser for the water. Clean up as I go here. Make sure you guys always use different nets for each tank. So you always want to have a bunch of these on hand. For the next set of tanks on top, I'm going to use this diffuser that I made. Pick your clamp. See there. And you can also see, well, I used to run this on a, a centralized filtration system. Um, use just some old sponge filters and you can actually use that um, to provide a screen. And I just use pot scrubbers, and that way nothing um, goes up in there. But right now I don't run 
uh, anything automated on these. I do these all manually. Labeling. You can pick these up uh, a lot of times at like a dollar store, and they're plastic. And then they're just little inserts. And I like using those. They stick right on the glass, and they don't leave a bunch of residue if you have to peel them away. But what's nice is you can always change these inserts. They come right out, or you can flip it around and use the other side. They correspond to a log, and that way, if I have somebody. Um, watching my setups for me as I will coming up here in a couple of weeks um, then all they have to do is go to the log find the tank and they know how to feed medicate so on and so forth so anyway we're gonna finish these water changes and I'll talk to you guys in a bit What is going on you guys? Welcome back. I'm going to just give you just a couple of tips um, when you're dealing with Ancestrous Fry and you're getting ready to introduce them into potentially a larger grow out tank. Um, so let's just get to it. Alright, as you can see these guys have um, eaten through their egg sac and as I mentioned in previous videos the way that I do it is I pull the egg so you can look at that um, in another video and then uh, go ahead and put those in the breeder box with an air stone let them eat through their egg sac and now these guys were from the 21st of february um and now they're ready to go into a grow out tank all you gotta do up there like so just kind of leave that in there and they will make their way out um, that's a mystery snail fry that's These are some cherry shrimp in a breeder box. See a male grazing up there. And female is behind the moss. You can kind of see her there. Uh, these are the snowball shrimp. See one of the fry there. There's another one. There's another one. And these guys are all the uh, yellow labs, which I'll eventually move them into their girl tank. website. Uh, they're pushing about an inch and a quarter. These are also the yellow labs. And I keep these 
these guys in there with uh, some of my ancestors Playco, which are also on the website. So works good as a draw tank. a molt there, one with a snowball shrimp. Here. Another one. Yeah, there's a bunch of them in there. Uh, might be able to see it, but there is a f one of my uh, cherry shrimp right there above my finger, which is just a little fry. There's a male. Female back there. If I can focus, looks like she's holding. And a lot of them are, of course, in the Java moss, so you're not going to be able to see it. Same thing in this tank, and then this is another tank of cherries. Let's see if we can focus in here female back there and I believe she's also holding which I can't see right now that moss this is another mystery snail so eventually these guys will be on the website Another one. There's another one back there. There's a clutch of mystery snail eggs. Another clutch. More clutch under that slate. You're not going to be able to see it. And again, this system is ran on a continuous drip with an overflow, which goes on to a sump, which is then pumped all the way over, up through the floor joists, and then down to my main floor drain. And then that's a carbon block is ran for all of my drip system. There is a larger self-clone fry, which is now at the ideal size to sell. Um, that one is right around an inch, which is a pretty decent size, maybe even an inch and a quarter. Eventually I will have those on the website as well, and then I have a bunch of uh, Incistrius grow outs in here. And then this tank here of course is the two red ear sliders and then the terrapin. Um, the larger one here front is a red ear, uh, the one behind is a red ear, and then the terrapin is hiding in the back, so I can't show you, but she is in there, and then this is a tank with more self-cloned crayfish fry, another grow out. There's the terrapin. All right, you guys, uh, that's just a quick update. So as always, I want you to stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on, happy fishing. Until next one, I'll talk to you.